If there's one more thing that's true in life, it's that nobody has the answers. Not a single human soul on this planet knows everything about anything. Nobody. Okay. And you have to be uh, afraid is not the right word. I just use that because I just sometimes I try to make as clickbaity a video title as possible. But afraid isn't the right word. You don't, you shouldn't be afraid of such people, people who claim to have all the answers about something in particular. What you have to be is you have to be, um, you have to be cautious, very, very cautious. You have to be wary of those people, people who claim to have the answers. Okay. Especially people who claim to have the kinds of answers that can lead you to some kind of revelation especially people who claim to have all the answers to a question that, that burns you so fiercely in your heart that sometimes you feel like you'll do anything to be able to answer it. People who say that they'll be able to not only answer that question, but if you follow me, if you become my disciple, if you become my whatever you'd like to call it, my follower, if you follow me and you devote a significant amount of time um, towards doing my, my will, my bidding. Or even if you uh, um, give me a substantial amount of, of your money. If you do so, not only will I answer your question, but I will change your life for the better. Now, is that, is that in and of itself wrong? Is saying such a thing to somebody, is telling somebody that you might be able to do that for them if they do such things for you, is that in and of itself uh, 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 wrong? That's the right way to say it. No, there's nothing really wrong about... Because at the end of the day, something like that is very much... It's, it's just like offering um, a service for anything else, right? If you have a broken air conditioner... You hire somebody to come and fix your air conditioner. If you have a broken uh, personal computer, you hire somebody to come and fix your personal computer. If you have a broken dishwasher, you hire somebody to come and fix your broken appliance, whatever it may be. The kinds of problems, but the thing about those, those the thing that, that really separates the problems that exist in here for us in such simple things like a piece of technology is that technology doesn't evolve and technology can't be fooled we can and we do um and the thing about you know people who offer such things who offer you all the answers is that they often, they know best, generally speaking, they know best that they have the best chance to ensnare you into whatever plot they've got cooking, whether it's nefarious or whether it's um, benevolent, regardless, whether it's hot or cold, they know that the best chance to recruit you is when they know that you're exhibiting some kind of desperation. When they know that you're, you're when they know that you feel not that you know when they know that you feel you need something more out of your life or out of what you created your life to be. Because most of the time when we find ourselves joining, um, for lack of a better word, cults, right? Or, or decide to follow someone essentially blindly. It's because what we have or what we know is not enough. We, we're, we're, we're thirsty for something more. Something. And that'll differ from person to person, obviously. Um, and what makes it so crazy is that it's so easy for all of us to be fooled. It's so easy to deceive someone into thinking that they need something that they don't. And... 
you know, it, it's so easy for us to kind of look at, at the people that we come to admire, the ones, because the ones who generally say that they're able to offer us that kind of service to solve a problem that exists in our life somehow, they generally tend to be people that we admire, that we look up to, that we, that we if we don't want to be outright, they're people that we have no problem worshiping to some degree. We become worshipers. And, um, you know, you kind of fool yourself into thinking that this person is infallible. You fool yourself into thinking, oh, they can't, they can't do any wrong. Or, or you, you look, you're so amazed by them. You're so enthralled by them. You're so, you're so impressed. You adore them so dearly that you can't even imagine them doing something wrong. You can't even imagine them doing anything that would make you come to hate them. And the crazy thing about it is that even when they end up doing something like that, it's so easy for you to, to delude yourself into thinking that the bad thing that they did was done for a higher purpose. Something that was done chiefly to hurt you. <laughs> to keep you down. To keep you enslaved, for lack of a better word. You fool yourself into thinking that it was done for good reason. You don't think of it as, as something evil. You don't think of it as something, and if not evil, because evil is, is an extreme, it, or it can be an extreme. You don't think of it as something evil. You think of it as something helpful. Something, a, a, a necessary hardship. You have to be really careful about deciding to follow someone who tells you that they have the answers because nobody does. Not a single person on this planet has all the answers. It's easy to think that way when you're desperate. It's easy for someone to, to fool you into believing otherwise. When you're desperate and when you're hungry for a change, not even hungry when you're starving for a change, the only thing that you can do in my opinion the only thing that a human being can do if they want to live the most rewarding life possible or at least the kind of life that more often than not seems to come back and reward them the best a human being can do is try to be as honest and as correct as possible. You can't be all the time. It's a, that that in its that is impossible. And when you try to convince other people that you can be, when you try to force it, you end up changing yourself in negative ways. When you start to convince yourself that you do know that you do know when you stop telling yourself well maybe i don't know as much as i think i do about this maybe i should do a little bit more soul searching maybe i should do a little bit of, of research maybe i should test myself and see if i'm as knowledgeable as i used to be if if i don't if if i don't think i know everything i still think of myself as learned Am I as learned as I used to be? Have I gotten lazy? Have I allowed some things to slip through the cracks? Am I worthy of, pe of, of other people's admiration? Am I worthy of being followed? Because regardless of whether or not you believe that people should be followed, regardless of whether or not you believe that gods in the form of humans should be a thing regardless of whether you think that it's ethical or right or whatever it's going to happen it's going to happen and maybe this is a, a deviation i'm kind of deviating from the original point of this video but if you've come if you've set yourself if, if you've decided that you're going to be someone that people are going to follow what you have to do especially as a man is you have to ask yourself always am i worthy of being followed. 
does my philosophy, does my outlook on life, does my goal, whatever that may be, does that make me worthy of being followed? Do I deserve people's undying loyalty? Is it something, is, is it something that I have earned? You always have to ask yourself that if you've committed to the idea and the, the execution and the action of becoming a leader. And yeah, I guess I am deviating now. But I think it's important to say you always have to ask yourself that. Am I worthy of being followed? The reason why, off the top of my head, the, be the, the most important reason why, or maybe one of them, because there are others that I'm not considering, but one of the most important reasons why is because it forces you, at least it, it, it implores you to be as honest as possible with yourself. That is the most important kind of honesty. Not necessarily honesty from other people, even though that's vital. It's important. But the most the, the 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 greatest form of honesty is the honesty you will have with yourself about yourself. So always, always asking yourself, "Am I doing enough? Is my vision is my vision just? Am I worthy of being followed?" so important for someone who is a leader to do and it's so important for you and i don't know who you are if you if any you know i don't know who you are i don't know if you decide that you're going to become a leader somehow i hope that you take words like mine to heart if they're not I, I know I'm not impressive. I'm not like the kind of man that, that maybe should be giving people advice like that. I don't consider myself that kind of man, but I'd like to think that most of the things that I say have elements of truth in them. Even if they're not quite 100% true, I will miss the mark sometimes. I understand that. Sometimes it's going to be way off the mark. You know, I, I don't like that. You know, there's a part of me that wishes I could be right about everything that I talk about. But unfortunately, I'm a human being. I'm going to be biased about some things, some things I'm just not going to be knowledgeable enough about. I'm going to get some things wrong. It is what it is. You know. Um, but in this case, I think that that kind of introspection is necessary for a leader. And it's also important for the leader's followers. If you haven't yet come to that conclusion, if you haven't, if you haven't yet stepped into those boots, if you're debating whether or not you should become someone's follower in, in that way, someone who's going to vote a substantial amount of their time and their money into elevating somebody else, because that's what you're doing when you're a follower, when you become a disciple of somebody, you, you, most of your time is spent elevating them. It's, it's at, it, at its purest, in its purest form, it's a very selfless thing to do because you're completely discounting yourself. Your well-being, your happiness doesn't matter. In many ways, in a kind of twisted way, your happiness is dependent on the happiness of the person that you idolize. If they're happy, you're happy, regardless of whether or not you're living the same life. When they're frustrated, you're frustrated. When they're irate, you are irate. Or at least you're motivated, coached, told to be that way. But you, you should never, never underestimate the power of the word why. Never underestimate the power of the word why. I think it's the most important question. In the entire English language, of course, I don't know the whole English language, so maybe, 
And of course, I don't, you know, I'm sure there are questions that could be more important. But off the top of my head, as far as basics go, as far as fundamental reasoning is concerned, off the top of my head, from what I know of the English language, the most important question consists of one word. And that's why. Why, 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 why? And you'll be honest with the answer. You don't lie to yourself when you ask that question. You got to be careful of people who say they have the answers. You got to.